she lost her name. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> it is me, the infamous T.S. Madison, and welcome to Asking for a Friend, season three. Oh, honey, you thought season two was hot? Baby, they ain't got nothing on the infamous jaw right here. Listen, this season we're getting into a whole bunch of stuff, but we're gonna start out with episode one. The sweetest taboo. Do you know what taboo means? Well, you're about to find out. Today we're talking about sugar daddies, sugar mama, sugar babies, and everything that make you run those pockets. So um, if your kid's up, I think you better tuck them in, because we about to get ready to uh, talk a little dirty. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts, baby. You in for the ride of your life. Get that half of my shoulder. They need to see this beauty. Mm. Hey, y'all, this is T.S. Madison, and welcome to Asking for a Friend Season 3. Yes, God, I am your hostess with the mostest, sitting here with my girl, Shakana Joe, which is my co-host, and baby, we about to get into some things. Now, mm -hmm. our first thing that we want to talk about today is the sweetest taboo. The sweetest taboo, girl. You know, taboo means you do it's something that's extraordinary, mm -hmm. but that's unorthodox and ain't supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. but do it anyway. Mm. And under that umbrella, we're talking about sugar daddies, sugar babies, being a sugar mama or being a sugar daddy. And we're going to be talking about should you let your partner know up front if you want to be taken care of for the rest of your life. That means you don't want, you want to get our food stamps and you want to just make sure that he the, he the, he the welfare office. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, so let's get into it. Shikana, have you ever been a sugar mama? Mm-mm. I've helped someone, but I don't consider myself being a sugar mama. Well, let's break down the definition of a sugar mama. Break it down. Um, what is it? What I is think it? a sugar mama is somebody who just supplies needs all the way around just a fool. Why would you say a sugar mama would be a fool? Cause she is a fool at the end of the day. He don't love her. He love what she, he do not care about her. He like what he she, what he can get from her. So I feel like if he don't like you for real, I don't know. I just mm -mm. so is it a double standard for for uh, a woman uh, to be looked at derogatory for having a for being a sugar mama than being a woman who wants a sugar daddy? I think both of them are fucked up. I don't. I do. You never had a sugar daddy? Um, I've had someone who's seen about me, but I didn't really like Girl, it. Girl, that's not the question. No, have you I, ever had a sugar like daddy? I don't like it because I don't want to be controlled. But just because you have a sugar daddy don't mean you control. Well, you want a sugar daddy? Yes, right now. Oh. I want a sugar daddy right now. I mean, I've had one before. How much money are you breaking? It was a lot. Mm. It was a lot of money. I done been down to the West. Listen, there's a girl out there right now that used to do my income tax. Her name is Nicole. Shout out to shout out to uh, Instant Tax Service, honey, because <laughs> that's my girl. And she used to see me come in. This is how we met. She used to see me come in and out of the check cashing store because I was receiving uh, wires all the time. Right. And she used to be like, and she was reading the names on top of the wires. And I, and one thing I got to give her, she's always been confidential. Right. She's never spilt the tea, nothing. But she used to read the names on the wires of the money that was coming in. She was like, bitch. I mean, because both of us had male names. Right. And I came in giving this. So, you know, I was coming to pick money up, never to send. Right. So, of course, she was like, girl. And then she sees the names on the top of the wires that come in. She's like, oh, it was what what's, mm. what's understood don't need to be spoken. Right. And she understood what was going on. And so I lived my life a long, long time, you know, mm. off of doing that kind of stuff. I ain't nothing wrong with a sugar daddy. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I just, I, I don't know. I want to take care of myself. It's, but you still take care of yourself. You I just, just don't want nobody questioning me, I guess. You set the rules in this, Shikana. Yeah, you do. But sometimes you set they the set rule. the rule when they give you a certain amount of nah, money. Nah, let, let me tell you something, ladies. If you want a sugar daddy and you really want to be into that, mm -hmm. you feel me? Remember, that's your, it's your pussy. He came to you for your pussy. Right. Or your beauty or your ass or your dick, your titties at the top, dick at the bottom. Uh, your Whatever it is, he, he came to you. So this means you have control. Right. A lot of times when men are sugar daddies and stuff like that, it, it's a control thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on both parties, right? Mm -hmm. But you ladies, you have to always remember that you are in control. This is why I couldn't be no sugar mama. Now the older that I'm getting, younger men do hit on me mm. all the time. 
I was like one of the first trans girls that you know was in that a lot of the men see out there from uh, back in the porn back in the day. And you you wanted some coffee. I do. I want some coffee. Can y'all bring some coffee here? Because we, we, it's about to get. You gonna need this to Thank you, to sis. keep your okay. adrenaline right. up with this. I gotta get the sugar too. You got some sugar. All right. Yeah, is it good? Is good coffee? It's amazing. Okay, sip it because you are gonna need to sip this slow about what I'm getting ready All to tell right, you. Ready. Come on. So you know, now that I'm older and I'm not into the adult film life anymore or doing any of the sex work and stuff like that, a lot of the men. Uh, like hit me up and they communicate with me. And then some of the younger men that have found out that I was in that and, you know, cause those videos still circulate out there and I'm not ashamed of it. Cause right. I still make my, I'm, I'm a, I'm a girl about her change, you know? And so, you know, they'll hit me up and, mm -hmm. and sometimes they'll come in and they'll be trying to talk to me and stuff like that or whatever, you know, and they may pull up in a nice car or with nice clothes and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, then they may try to swindle me out of my coin. And we call those types of men salt daddies. Salt daddy. So you got to be careful of this too, Shekana. I don't fuck with the daddies. Why you don't fuck with the daddies? Hell, you go back with this. I don't fuck with the daddies. Shekana, do you like men? I like to get fucked by a man because I don't want to no, bump cats. But so, you, you know you could, because you know that it's a taboo thing if you did want to bump cats that you can get a, a woman could scrap on and tear you up. I'll let you fuck me. Well, I don't need a strap on to do that. That's what I'm trying to say, because I don't want to feel no strap. I want to feel the real meat. So me and girls don't get along because they don't have the real meat. I um, just feel like that I've been propositioned by my sister to, to, <laughs> to tell her sugar walls up. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aging now. I'm getting older. Come so this on, means I'm, I'm, I'm really am not opposed to trying new things. You ain't? No, well, not let's before. Have, let's go in on the baby. You know what? Our baby would look alike if we had a baby. Yeah, the baby be cute. Which one does? Sister, don't play with me, girl. Don't you play with me. That'll be big. Girl, I, just, all I, I, don't even need, I don't think I need a Viagra no more. We'll tell the nation up now. <laughs> they don't know what the fuck to do with us. <laughs> you bitch. The, now, baby, the baby got two mamas. But, but, well, let's talk about a Viagra. Well, let's talk about them. I want to talk about it with, in all this stuff since we talk about taboo things. <laughs> okay, Tim. I used to take a Viagra. Oh, that dick never went down. Never. Oh. But I used to do that because when I was in the business mm -hmm. of... Um, sex work and stuff like that, I would take the Viagra because I was not really attracted to not a lot of the, the clientele that come. And then, you know. You weren't attracted. No. I mean, the, I mean, the money made me get right. <laughs> but you ain't really like them. You got to realize, Shekana, this is, I can, you can, you can detach yourself sexually from, I mean, rom romantically and emotionally from somebody and still have sex with them. Mm. We're going to be talking about that in another show. We're going to have to because that shit's scary. It's not scary. Then somebody can just fuck you for the moment. Well, if you a sugar mama or a sugar daddy, usually that's what's going on. It's somebody buying that ass from you. That ain't what's going on. They thinking that one day they're going to be with you. No, that's not true. She. I don't think that there's any sugar daddy out there right now or a sugar mama out there right now that's thinking that they're going to be with the person that they're, that they're taking care of. Yes, they do. That's the fantasy. Okay, if I so had, you trying to tell me your sugar daddy didn't want to be with you? Well, I was I was younger. But that man wanted to be with you. I don't believe that. I don't got that Western Union. You say he was saying he wanted that, but he also was married. He wanted to leave that bitch. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Because a man do exactly what he want to do. He wanted to leave that bitch. I want ladies. I want y'all to hear this. A man does exactly what he wants to do. So if you waiting on him to leave his wife, I don't want him to leave. His wife. He not. So you shouldn't even be in that type of shit anyway. So why the hell you was in it? Because I was a whore at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Shit <laughs> I was a whore at the time <laughs> Man you crazy But I'm dead serious I was a whore at the time And, he, and that man was paying bills for me Not, And I was also seeing other men I mean, Because the money was he didn't feel no kind of way about you seeing other men Just be telling the truth Well how could he feel any type of way about He was paying me for He was he was my sugar daddy taking care of me But he was also paying me for my time Was your sugar daddy like 70? No he was actually uh, He was actually a, a Baby, I don't want you because I know you're gonna watch this. I don't. I don't want to tell your team. <laughs> he was a bit younger than me, but I actually liked him though. What? But he was he was a professional something. But he was younger than you. Hmm. A little bit. Mm. So was, you had your young. He was sugar rich daddy though. That's a tender. He was rich you had though. A, a young tender. It's your sugar daddy. So, so okay, okay. So here's the misconception. The misconception is that sugar daddies have to be old. 
or sugar mamas have to be old? That would you used to think. But you done had a young one. He was younger than me. It's deep. And that's where he went. Real deep. He did. Ooh. Deep, deep. I still love him to this day. I love him, though. But he went deep, deep. I still love him he to put, this day. He put a stain on your heart. He ain't stained my heart because I understood what it was, but we friends now. But he stained your heart, though. You but, wanted him. Well, it wasn't a fact that I wanted him, right? Tell the truth, Maddie. Did you want to be with the man? I mean, I would have. This motherfucker paying all your bills, mm -hmm. doing everything you need. Mm -hmm. And if you had to turn back to hand signs and he said he was going to lead them, you wouldn't have wanted them. Well, I'll, I believe in whatever a man does with you, he'll do to you. Uh. So if a man cheating on you, if a man is cheating with on you with his wife right now, when you marry him, he's going to cheat on you with a man. I believe that too. So whatever he do with you, he'll do to you. Well, maybe he changed his ways. I don't know. We, we talk every so out there. We're mm. friends. He still working for it. He give me money sometimes, but it's not like he can't like you know. My lifestyle is most definitely went in another direction. Right. I have liked a guy a lot, mm. and I didn't see myself like being a sugar mama. But it's like, can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? Can you help? And then when I started thinking about, it, I'm like, well, damn, have I turned into this? Mm. Have I turned into what I once was? But it wasn't like that. I had him on a. Like a retainer, like a lawyer or nothing like that. It was very much so like a tire bus or I need help with this and the other and I've done it. Like like I would do with any of my friends. So I was so was I sugar mama? No. Did you break thousands and thousands and thousands? No, I, I don't go that no. Well, I don't think you was a sugar mama. No, I don't go over I don't go over two hundred dollars. Oh, bitch, you ain't no damn sugar mama. Oh, cause that's 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 what the, that's trick money. Two hundred dollars is trick money. Yeah. That was that's average. That's the average. You're not. You're not. You're not. That's the cost money. of average mediocre pussy. Two hundred dollars. Oh no, it ain't. It's forty. No, I said mediocre pussy. It's forty. No, forty dollars is just the girls. No, get, forty dollars is any time pussy. Me, that ain't. They don't mediocre. Girl, pussy. I'm telling you, the girls are getting forty dollars. Have a man ever offered you forty dollars? No, not me. I'm not one of them. I know that, but a man, but either a man can still do that. I, I a man has offered me forty dollars. Oh, what? You told him he got 40. And what you told him, die? Mm-mm. Oh. I told him you could suck my dick for it. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I ain't gonna turn down ah! no good head. And $40 too. I'll tell you, that, no that sounds good, though. You know what I'm saying? You gonna get your... Yeah, that, that was a good 40. And ladies and gentlemen that are watching the show... I need for you to get down in the comment section right now and tell us about your sugar daddy, sugar mama experience, or if you one of them niggas out there that's a salt bay or a, not salt bay, a, a salt daddy. Let us know. You let know? us know because you a fle you a flexer. You finessing on the girls in that puss. Let us know what's going on. You want to know Chicago? I want to. I'm gonna read all y'all comments. I'm gonna read them too. I'm gonna be involved because you know I'm a nosy bitch. <laughs> But please make sure you get down there in the comment section and discuss all the things that we are we have talked about. All of them. All of it. Don't be don't be afraid to add us because we will respond back. Yes. You know, I'm gonna respond back. We gonna respond back. We gonna respond back. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Stay tuned for what's next. Honey, you got a light bill too. Your baby need a pair of shoes. Oh, bitch, you need a mattress too. Girl, dial 1-800-GET-A-TRICK. You see that number running across the screen down there at the bottom? We got six bitches waiting on the end of the line for you right now that's going to give you the pamphlet on how to get a trick. Girl, I know you got to show a little hip, a little ass, a little thigh. Girl, get over there to that damn gas pump. Been over one or two times, girl, pulling your stockings up. Child, get you a trick. You get a trick. You get a trick. I get a trick. Girl, dial 1-800-GET-A-TRICK right now and get a trick for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're loud, live, and in color, honey, with T.S. Madison on Asking for a Friend. I heard we got some callers out there. Caller, are you on the line? I'm here. How are you? I'm good. How you doing, baby? I'm not too good right now. I have a problem, and I need your help. Girl, what's wrong, child? Me and my boyfriend, we have a history of breaking up and getting back together. Wait a minute. Why do y'all keep breaking up? He's toxic. What's wrong with him? <laughs> it's a long story. But give me the tea, girl, because my ears all the way down to uh, the speaker. During the time we were apart, 
I learned that I was very heavily into BDSM. Oh, you like to get tied up and whooped. I sure do. Or do you like to do the tie? A little bit of both. I'm exploring. So when you enjoyed yourself, did you use your hands, fingers, or toes? All of the above, sis. All of the above. <laughs> but now that we're getting back together, the problem I find myself having is that I don't know how to ease him into these new things I'm trying. Like, it took me months just to convince him to let me suck his Wait a balls. minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So you did this BDSM thing with somebody else outside of your relationship? I'm guilty. But we were broken up. All right. I, okay, you did tell me y'all broke up. Girl, I thought you was trying to try something, nigga. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get this right. So you broke up with your man. You went out and a new nooker got you into doing BDSM. Tying up, toes up, legs up, ass up, everything, right? So now you done came back home and you with your man. And you want to get him into it. But he just now letting you suck his balls. Exactly. Like, the sex is just so vanilla. And I don't know how to introduce him to this new me. Well, first of all, girl, if you just now uh, getting a chance to suck his balls, you don't need to be with that kind of man anyway. Listen, men need to be the most explorative as they can with you. Because, girl, let me tell you something. If he ain't doing it with you, he doing it with somebody else. Obviously, you was too. But now that you back home and y'all together... I personally think that you should just tie that nigga down to the bed, give him a cap full of diamond tap, honey, knock him out then, get on top of him, ride him, blindfold him, and choke him a little bit. He'll come up. <laughs> but no, finish telling me. Give, me. give me the rest of the tea. Ultimately, I'm afraid he's going to shame me. I had a conversation with my homegirl the other day, and I told her that I was like, I have a praise kink. Like, tell me I'm a good girl. Tell me I'm a bad girl. Like, just talk dirty to me. And she immediately responded that I was weird and that I must have some, like, childhood traumas or whatever. Okay, wait a minute. So a praise kink means when you suck in his ball, he's saying, thank you, baby. You the best ball sucker that I ever had, right? Exactly. Oh, girl, you just doing what you're supposed to do. Why would your girlfriend tell you that that's not something that you should be doing or you got issues? Honey, what kind of sex are these, these hoes having? What's going on? I don't know, girl. She's a hater. Big hater energy. So you want to be on your knees, pleasing your man, licking his balls. Do you get the gooch and the butt just a little bit? Not yet. See, like, because I've been somewhat shamed by those that are close to me, I'm nervous about exploring it further and just being open about it. Like, what do I do? Here's the thing. The Bible says that the bed is undefiled when you're with your husband. Now, I don't know what it says if you with somebody else's husband or if you with your friend, but treat that man like he your husband, honey. Get down on your knees, please that man, and let him please you by letting you please him. See, the thing about it is we get into these relationships and we have been so bound by the teachings and the things that our grandparents and our great grandparents have uh, instilled in us that we think that uh, having sex is just some regular way, just like laying on your back. Turning over, getting hit from the back, you know, just regular sex. It is a new age. And in this new age, you have to be as explorative as possible because you got to remember all the things that you won't do, somebody else will. Now, mind you, if this man is not willing to do these things with you, are you sure you want to be with him? You got to start questioning yourself. Because you shouldn't be with a partner that's going to make you go out and see other people. What is the reason being in a relationship? This is why I always tell women, when you first meet a man, girl, within the first seven days, go on ahead and fuck him. You got to know how sexually compatible you are with this person because you could be wasting a lot of time. Imagine being in a relationship with an individual and you're mentally compat compatible, you're spiritually compatible, and then you're sexually frustrated. What you going to do? You're going to go outside of the box. So for me, when I have conversations like this with lots of women, I usually try to tell women to explore as much as you can because men do it all the time. Now, he might be reserved with you. But who's to say he ain't reserved with that stripper or that other girl that he done picked up on the side of the corner? 
So ladies, always, always, and this may sound like some whole shit, but always within the first seven days, find out what that nigga's freak meter is. Cause if it don't match yours, ain't no reason for y'all being together. Cause you both gonna cheat. All right. Well, this been your, this been your advice, honey, from the TS baby, and I'm glad you called in to asking for a friend, honey, because a friend damn sure told you what a friend to tell you. Bagger. Hey, y'all. What's up? This is your girl TS Madison back on asking for a friend, and this section we call ask an expert. And today I have a sexpert, actually S E X P E R T. Miss Amina. Amina. Hey. Do you pride yourself on being an uh, expert in sex? I do. I love it. Yes. So many women will not come forth and, and, and talk about the connection that they have with their bodies and the connection that they have with their sexuality. I think because lots of women have um, been conditioned that you're supposed to grow up and be a wife. Right. And wholesome. Right. And not be a hoe. Right. And I want ladies out there to understand that it's okay if you a hoe. Absolutely. I've been a hoe for over 25 years. Wait a minute. I oh, didn't mean sorry. that, but you said, you just, girl, you jump right. So you, okay, well, let's talk about hoeism. Yeah, I mean, I've been a sex worker for over 25 years, and I'm with my third husband. So you can be a hoe and a housewife if you want to. Wait a minute. Now, how does that work? Um, what you mean? How does being a hoe and a housewife work? How does how do the how does the, do the two go hand in hand? I think it works better than not being a hoe and a housewife, actually, because I am going to make sure that my pleasure is met. I'm gonna make sure that my needs are met, and um, and there's no rigmarole about it. Like I just know that's gonna happen. I want to talk, speak to some of the backlash that you may get, like from from talking about this or being very public about it. What is some of the uh, of the backlash or some of the misconceptions that people get when you say I'm a hoe and a housewife and a proud sex worker? Yeah, I think the biggest misconception, one of the things people try to hurl as an insult mm -hmm. is like that I won't somehow get chosen. Like men are really difficult to get. Oh. That's always a strange one for me oh. um, because I mean, men are easy. Hey, girl, can we, can we do this? <laughs> like for real. Why do you think that it is a thing for people to shame women for having multiple multiple sex partners and it's okay I, I know i do know it's patriarchy yeah but why do you think that it's the double standard like really really sits i think it's just ignorance at the at the end of the day and um and fear wound up in one big bubble like the reality is, is men are competitive like the masculine is competitive masculine energy is competitive and so they're coming into this already knowing that they're probably going to lose, right? And they're not going to be number one. They're probably not going to be number two. And the more numbers that are there, then the more they got to compete against. And so somebody that's really know that they their game is trash, they're really going to have a problem with body counts because they already know, like, you've had better. You probably, you're going to face abandonment issues. You might leave me. What are you going to think about me? All the self-judgment that they don't have about their own dick is going to show up in that relationship. And so they're con constantly... Moving. Moving and worried about the minutia instead of the things that really matter. Tantra. What right. is that? Tantra is really about embodiment. It's about like actually being able to feel, to be able to tap into your senses. Sex is a part of that, like, but it's a part of your living. Like it's sex is one part of you and you have all these parts and they make a whole. You don't separate one from the other. You don't denigrate your desire or, or make you try to make yourself feel bad about your desire and things like that. Like, but it's not just about sex. When people hear tantra, the first thing that comes to mind is sex, and it literally the way that I use tantra as an application is like, so many people don't like know what their body feels like. They can't tell you what where pleasure is in their body. Sex for so many people is genitals, is let me get your dick, let me get your pussy, let me get your ass, let me put your me. titties. I'm yeah. not even going front for right, me. Right, right. And so when you start actually awakening yourself to the rest of your body, which is something that Tantra can invite, then your sex is more expansive. It's explosive. Like the way your orgasms end up being, and that's not the reason for Tantra. Tantra is not a sexual religion or a sexual spiritual practice. It is an awakening of the body. It is a way awareness. And like it changes everything. I watch people that 
um, who have had sex their whole lives and have, you know, you start getting older and now, now the, the, the thrill is gone. Mm-hmm. And, but I can bring that back by awakening things in your, Ooh, in your you feet, go, you go, you in could your do toes, tantra to me. in your... Do you, can you use toys with the tantra? Yeah, we use, well, so it's, it's not with the tantra, right? The tantra is the awakening, but then that allows you to be able to experience, excuse me, experience the toys. Because what happens is you have toys and people are like, oh, that shit don't excite me. But it's because they don't feel like they're not, there's not, and I'm not saying that you have to have toys in your sex to, to be able to have good sex, but it's like, there's things that you can do, bring With in. With a toy? Yeah. Let like, me see. You got some toys? I do you got some toys. So these are sensory gloves, right? And so I'm just going to kiss. So just a little bit of actual awakening to the body, right? That you may not even, I'm going to teach you how to tap into the fact that your whole body is a sex organ. Every inch of skin covering you is available for pleasure, if you let it be, if you allow it to be. So something just as simple as this. Nom I actually like that. Right, yeah, so it's like, it's things like this. It's always, Everybody always think a sex toy gotta look like this. What the hell is that? Some straight men really get mad or intimidated by the fact that their wife or their girlfriend or their boo thing or their baby mama have a sex toy. Um, cause they, again, they, they all read about being replaced. And this is something that you could actually put on your fooda, the fat upper dick area. Girl, I got, you could put it right there. So you <laughs> shit. put it right, ooh. <laughs> That's just level one. <laughs> That's two. That's three. I feel like I got the that's Holy Ghost. Four. <laughs> and hold on. That's the remix. And then there's all different vibration. This is the wireless one, so it has more functionality. The only thing about the wireless one, sometimes it'll stop on you. Can you put it on the, the party. Mm-hmm. This is the thing, like, right? So did you see how you right away you went to that? People don't even realize, like, of course this is gonna feel I had a whole titty gasm. Of course this is gonna feel good on my titties. It feels good everywhere. It's sold as a massager. You can use it on your neck if you want to. But a lot of people are afraid to play with things like implement like uh, kink implements because they think that they think, yeah. They think it's gonna hurt, but actually, you can actually be real sensual no, with it. No, I don't sense you. Tap me. Oh, oh, oh! But this one, oh, this one, wait, even, it wait, do it again, hard. do it. Oh, oh, oh! Yes, yes. So, like, if somebody wants a little more pain, like this is, see, this is thinner, so it's gonna feel kind of like what like you got. Like a cat of nine you. tails. Yes, exactly. So, I know, I can see it. I'm just gonna. Ooh, oh, she's hurt up. Oh, ooh. So this one sting a little more, right? Yes. It's a little bit more I stinging. like it, though. And oh. a lot of times people don't know what they'll like. But again, you can drag it. It's a different sensation. You can go through multiple ooh. times. You can just, you know, get in the rhythm of things. Ooh. Have a song on. That, rhythm uh, is uh, a dancer. Uh, rhythm uh, is uh, a dancer. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and if you put this in, it's a vibrating butt plug. It goes in the ass. This goes in the ass. And you can go as shallow or as deep as you want. But it vibrates. So you can actually have buzzing in the back. And how, and this is any, any, we all got buttholes. I don't care what you got in the front. We all got the same thing in the back. This works perfectly like as a thing to have you already going. Your body's already vibrating and electric and then somebody comes and does that. Or they drag their hands across or they have a couple paddles or they have a vibrator. Like, I there's like so hot many wax, ways. I mean, you like hot wax? I do. I love hot wax. I like yeah. hot wax a lot. So yeah, I mean, I, there's a ton of toys I love. You know, we have events where we have pull out the whole, I have a whole dungeon in the house. We have events where we pull out all the works and all the different toys. But there, I think people just have to realize, like, you will only eat the same food if that's all you ever eat. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be happy with that. That might be fine for yeah. you. Yeah. And, and I'm, I won't shame that either. Um, but for people that are looking for something more, it's not scary. You can get somebody to help you. You can find somebody to make recommendations. You can just go try some stuff out. You don't like it, you don't like it. But to be in a space where you're not enjoying sex or you're living by somebody else's standards, like, or somebody else's idea of what you're supposed to be, that is misery. Well, you said something, and I want to close out with this. You said you can find somebody. Mm -hmm. that can help you do these things. Where can we find you, Amina? 
I am ATL Tantra, so ATL T A N T R A on across all platforms and dot org. ATL Tantra dot org. You can come see me, <laughs> pardon the pun. You can come see me there. You can um, I have a retreat center in Costa Rica where I work with couples, I work with individuals and groups, and I teach people how to actually experience true orgasm. Not ejaculation, but true orgasm where it expands throughout your whole body. And I change lives, so you can come see me through that. I'm ATL Tantra on Instagram, Twitter, and all the other things. Listen, it has been a pleasure and a joy to have you here. I've learned so much, and I am actually want you to put that goodie bag for me to the side. Okay, all right. It's you, been a pleasure. I love yeah. you. I love, I love you, you too. So I love you. Listen, everybody, please get down in the comment section and tell us what was your favorite part about this whole interview. Did you learn anything? Are you going to try anything? Let us know. See you soon. Thank you guys for joining us this episode honey and i want to give a special thank you to my girl our guest goddess amina Woo. and to that caller that called in talking about her bdsm love life girl we thank you too listen don't ever be afraid to lean in to your bdsm love life or your partner all right now next episode we're talking about relationships relationships and more damn relationships and honey, you know I got a whole bunch of stuff to say about that. So please make sure you are subscribed to Blavity. Turn on your notifications and don't you miss nothing. See you next episode. Ciao.